Hi everybody, it's Robbie from Southern California and this is the last garden tour of the year. Can you believe it? The year is almost over. In two weeks, we will be 2020. So I'm just gonna walk through quickly because I'm really not doing a whole lot right now. I haven't even watered my garden for a week, which is a good thing. I'll show you the garden as I walk through. The squash, a lot of the plants are still alive, but they're not really doing good. They've got a lot of powdery mildew. Some of them are throwing a little bit of squash. I get a small amount, get a lot of small ones, which is good because the small ones are good too. Here's the onions on the chair. They're doing really good. And we have still lots of onions growing now. I'm gonna just walk through and you'll be able to see behind me what's going on. We still have tomatoes, as you can see. Let me see if you can see this. But we have tomatoes that are growing. That's one thing we won't have a shortage of. I've got green sorrel. I think they call it French sorrel behind me. That's doing really good. A lot of the greens are doing really, really well. Here are more onions. I've got more onions. Chamomile tea is still growing. Um, garlic chives are still growing. So all in all, what's really not growing right now would be the zucchini and the squash. They're kind of growing, but they're not really doing anything, a lot of them, because it's a warm weather plant and it's just not gonna do anything. Like peppers are a warm weather plant and they're not gonna do anything. But we've got a pepper growing, big peppers, because it's inside. The chair is doing fantastic. I've got tomatoes all back there. Um, Midnight snacks are growing on here. Look, it's still flowering. I still have lots of flowers. And then I've got green Swiss chard growing. There's onions in there growing. Well, I should say walking onions are growing. Garlic chives are growing. So the chair is doing fantastic up against the house. Probably stays warmer. Everything else around here is doing quite well. As you can see, it's doing really, really well. Like I said, I wanna really do this quick because we really haven't done anything. The new year, we're gonna start doing a lot. I'll probably take you on the new year to go ahead and dig up all the ginger and the turmeric here. And I have a little bit of stevia still growing, but all in all, it's gone the seed and it does die back when it gets cold. So when it gets cold, it is done. Um, there is the purple tree colored that I bought online. It needs to have a lot of these leaves trimmed off. Remember, don't throw anything away. Um, it's doing quite well, a little skinny, but you know what? We're gonna get it into the garden in the spring. No reason to rush and do it now. And then behind me here, got the sun in my eyes now, the tomato plant is still growing. Like I said, I really haven't done anything. What I've been doing, and now I will have the sun in my eyes because the sun is going down. What I have been doing is cleaning up in the garden. I've been doing a lot of cleaning and deciding what's going to stay. I'm going to leave the dinosaur kale that's going to be four or five years old. I think it's going to be five years old this spring. And I'm cleaning up and filling up tubs. So that I am doing. I've been freshening up some of these containers that are up against the wall here. So I've been doing that too and getting ready for the new year. My lemon verbena is dying back it's turning yellow so that's pretty much done and then as you can see behind me i've got more lemon verbena that lemon verbena is doing pretty good i've got a lot of dinosaur kale and it looks beautiful absolutely beautiful it is so green i'm going to leave the sprouting purple broccoli which is there i was going to move this tower and reset it up but that is doing really well i'm quite anxious to see what happens in the spring as far as the purple sprouting broccoli. So I'm gonna leave that because it kind of, I don't know if I can get in there. Let me see if I can. I don't wanna knock down bird feeders and stuff. But it kind of, if you can see it, it kind of wound around and went everywhere. And it does need a lot of training. But in the meantime, it is doing really well. And we still use the leaves. Let me get away from here. I've got bird feeders all over. So we'll see what happens later. I'm not gonna do a lot. It's been really cold. I am a wimp when it comes to the cold weather. But like I said, I haven't even watered for a week. Can you imagine I haven't watered my garden for a week? It's still damp. The only things I had to check were anything against the house because it's under the eaves and it may not get 
water to it, but you know what? It was still damp, so I just did a little watering with a water can, but that was it. The birds have been coming in. They've been taking baths. Rain or shine, they take baths, so we leave the fountains going. Of course, the solars won't work when it's raining, but if we do turn on some of the other fountains that are electric, there's two electric ones, so we turn those on. Like I said, the only thing I've been starting to do now is kind of evaluate a little bit on what I may want to do in the spring. And just getting rid of a lot of the dead stuff and starting to fill up containers. Never throw that away. That's going to all turn into soil. So I'm just kind of been walking through and doing things like that. Like there's still leaves up there on the tree colored I've got to get down. And I've got a bunch of these plastic containers. Number five, remember, you can use almost any plastic container with the triangle underneath as long as it's not a three. If you don't find a triangle, smell it, or if you're in doubt, don't use it, because the triangle is pretty much letting you know the food safe ones. They use number two, one, two, and you see sometimes a four, and almost everything from the grocery stores are fives. So I'm most of the ones I buy are fives, the plastic. They just seem to be fives, and so I've been filling those containers up and now I'm getting ready to let it break down all winter and then come spring, I'll put something on the top. If you've got grass clippings, put that on there. I have wood chips, I can put that on there. Sometimes I put potting soil on there and then grow on top as everything continues to break down in the spring. But right now I'm still piling it. You probably have no idea what I'm saying. Watch some of my past videos if you don't know what I'm talking about. I think a lot of you already understand what I'm doing. I just don't throw any leaves away that are starting to turn yellow because leaves turn into soil is what it is. All in all, things are growing. We've got tons of greens and greens is what I really push people to grow because greens are the most expensive things in the grocery store. Get a little bundle of greens, one pound, it can be anywhere from two to five dollars for one pounds of organic greens. So it's quite expensive and we use a lot of greens for different things. But all in all, you can see that the garden behind me is still very, very green. Uh, the Moringa is now all pods and seeds. We'll let it turn brown and then we'll go ahead and get it down later. And then the papayas, these are the strawberry papayas. They're full of papayas, both trees. Both of them are full of papayas. I'll take you inside with my other camera to show you the what's going on on the inside. And people have asked me, why in the world do you want a garden inside? Well, what if someday I decide I want to move? What if I don't want to live in Southern California? We're playing around with ideas and things that we can do is what it is. Oh, look at this behind me. Let me see if you can see this. Look at the papayas. And I've been asked, will they last all winter here? Yes, papayas grow all winter here. They may get a little bit, you know, damaged from cold if we get a lot of freeze, but all in all, the plants have been doing fantastic and I hope to get more papaya plants growing. And then I've got this one too, this got papayas. Remember, you compost in place. Like I said, I don't want to get into a great amount of details right now. We're at the end of the year. Look how beautiful everything is behind me. And We'll really get into it in January because after the holidays, everybody's going to start gardening. They're going to start thinking, what can I plant? They're going to start growing their seedlings inside because they'll get a jump start growing your seeds inside. And that's what we're all going to do. Look at this. I'm getting a jump start on my wall. I've got my eggplant I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave a lot of stuff that's growing just to see what happens with it. The squash, well, it's not doing any harm leaving it there. I'm going to leave it. I still do have squash down here, round ones. I'll get in there and show you. So the round ones are still growing and I'm still getting small squash. So I will leave that. No reason for me to mess around with that now. I am filling up these gray containers that I got at the thrift store with compost. And I'm going to have it all along the wall. I did a video on that. And see here? Now, if you complain and say, hey, it's going to smell a little bit, no biggie. Put some wood chips, soil, or grass clippings on top, and it won't smell. It'll get a sweet smell to it. But the whole wall here, I'm planning on doing tubs and going much further because the tubs have worked out so well. And if you've got a tree that you know, has a lot of roots that get into your garden, 
like we have the pepper tree behind me, that tree sends out tons of roots. So it can't go up the roots and into the container. So you want to keep the holes a little bit above from the bottom. If you don't have a problem, then don't worry about it. Put it on the bottom. And guess what? Your earthworms will still go into the holes that are just above. They crawl, so there's not a problem with that. So the earthworms will go into the containers that I have on the wall and they will go in there and find the food matter I threw in there. But I just have to keep that pepper tree roots out because otherwise they get in there and they block the holes. And sometimes my tubs will not drain because they set, set their roots in there and then the roots get big and they block the hole up so they're sucking the water and the food out of my tubs and I'm watering it, but the plant could end up drowning because the pepper tree went ahead and blocked the holes. So I have to keep you know an eye on that. The truck bed is doing really good and we'll see in the spring what we're gonna do with it. Right now it's loaded with Swiss chard, three different types. We've got the green, the red, and then the green and red. This one is a mix it's got a uh, kind of greenish leaves and then it's got the red veins. So we use this all the time. Doesn't matter if I'm making stir fry, if I'm making eggs, we use it. Here are my apple trees that I planted. Both of them are doing really surprisingly well. This one had such a massive root system was coming towards the top that I covered it with some more wood chips. I'll see. I think I'm going to plant a bunch of trees along here. I might even early in the spring, buy a couple trees and plant some more trees along here. I'd like to have some more fruit trees. But going back to the indoor garden, I'm going to show you what's going on on the indoor garden. And the reason is, like I said, what if I decided to move? What if someday I say, you know what, it's too expensive living here in California. I'm tired of paying all these taxes and I'm going to move to another state, get a nice big house that's a third of the price and garden. Let me tell you something. It could be done and my half of my house would be a garden indoors. I now know it can be done. So you could grow everything inside. The only thing you may not be able to grow is maybe a lot of fruit trees. That would not say that Gary would not try to grow papaya trees indoors, but you could probably have a really nice greenhouse with that. But I'm not saying we're moving because I would love to stay in Southern California. But again, it's so expensive. That is no joke. You live your whole life paying taxes here, trying to keep everything going. So that's what I don't know what I want to do. So we are experimenting with growing indoors and we are exper experimenting all the time with different things. Even if it's not for us to maybe give somebody else an idea. So that's basically it. Like I said, there's not a whole lot. You know what? Let's go ahead and run inside here. The door is open. And I'm going to show you what is going on in here. And Gary is still working. He set up a fish tank he had. He's going to figure out what he wants to do with it. See? And he's got mirrors everywhere. And yes, look! A sweatshirt with pockets. See, I got pockets in my sweatshirt. And it works really good. I really like it. Just a cute little baby outfit I had and made a pocket. But anyways, getting back to this. It's doing really well indoors. I cannot, in Southern California here, grow peppers out on the ground because it's too cold. We've been getting down to, like they said, 40. It's been going 40 and it's going even lower than that. Sometimes it's been going down into the 30s. But in here, in this garden, in the house that we're starting to set up, we've got massive peppers growing. They're sweet peppers and I've been using it on pizza that I make. I make a gluten-free pizza and Gary loves his peppers and they are growing really good here. Tomatoes. We've got tomatoes growing, more flowers are coming through here and there's more flowers on the other side. So we now know we can easily grow tomatoes inside. And then the moringa, we'll see. I don't know if the moringa will make it all winter, but we brought them in and they've improved. They started to go yellow and now they've greened up. We'll see. We know that Malabar spinach will grow. So we'll see what happens with that. And that, some people don't like it. They say it's fleshy, but you know what? If you're making a salad, toss it in. It's so healthy. Just toss in a little bit. And then he's got his trees. Like I said, this room 
we're just starting to put things here. When he's set up, he's going to have the window clear so the sun will come in here. He's Today he mounted up some more mirrors. I didn't even see those. I ran to the store. These are all new that he put this up probably today. It's got all kinds of mirrors. He wants to make sure there's enough light in here. Windows, we're going to change the window and put a white sheet across there. And he's just changing things up. So we're still working on the indoor garden. But it's the idea is what will work, what will not work, and what we can improve on to make it work. If one thing doesn't work, like we know now, these are sweet peppers. We now know we can grow sweet peppers inside and tomatoes. So it's kind of like what we can do. And if we can do it, that means anybody else can do it. Anybody can grow tomatoes and peppers inside if you have a good window with some sunlight coming through. So that's basically it. The, um, we'll see if the eggplants continue to make it. This one went yellow. There was one actually the other day, Gary ate it, even though it was yellow. It didn't really have that much of a tinny taste. So he went ahead and still ate it. My red vein sorrow is doing really well. And I planted some seeds, I'll show you later, that are starting to come up. But what's really cute is I found that there's a whole bunch of red vein sorrel growing in here. So fun! I didn't even know they fell off the plant and they're coming up everywhere. What do we do with that? Again, we add that to green drinks or for making a salad. I don't eat it like as a, I would not sit down and eat a bowl of red vein sorrel or green sorrel. You add it in. You want to have a mix of different foods to eat. It doesn't all have to be the same. Yes, you could take collard leaves and the tree collard leaves and chop them up. You could, that you could saute with butter and eat it just like that. There's a lot of things you can do with that. That's different, but some of the other ones are more specialty greens. And so with that, you want to kind of add that in for whatever you want to do with it. Uh, I even put that on pizza and different things. So I wanted to just kind of walk through and wish everybody a wonderful holiday season. Don't worry, you haven't gotten rid of us. You'll still see plenty of us. But as far as a garden tour, to waste your time for an hour. And I know there's a lot of people that say, oh, I want to hear you talk. You know what? I, I think that I can do other things besides a garden tour that's going to look the same. I'm happy right now it's still green, but you know what? We get into our coldest months here in Southern California, which are December and January, usually. That's usually what happens is the coldest months are then. We have been very cold, you know, for, for this time of the year in December. We were really cold in November and we normally are not. And we don't know what's gonna bring in January. We could be colder, or we could warm up. It's hard to say what, what's going to happen. So we'll wait and see what Mother Nature brings us. We had a really, really cold winter. Uh, I shouldn't say winter. We had a warm winter last year. We had an extremely cold spring this year. In 2019, our spring was just freezing in many, many nights. So I don't know what's going to happen, but we'll see. In the meantime, we're not out of food. We have plenty of greens, plenty of food growing. Gary's garden, which is down there behind me, he's got a lot going on down there. And we'll just, we'll get through the winter. We're gonna be perfectly fine. We have more than enough food. But as far as the garden, now I have a chance to reevaluate. I've cleaned up this area. I couldn't even walk in here before. I had a big zucchini that came up in this tub that was supposed to be holding kitchen scraps. It ended up grew a lot of squash. And that was okay, but now I can kind of walk around the yard and decide what changes I want to do, what I want to do in the garden, what's going to make it easier for me to maneuver through the garden, and maybe just see if what other things I want to try. And I do want to try more things. As far as peppers, I have ideas on peppers. I need to get them up against a warmer wall. We still have cool nights, and though we can grow a lot of peppers here in Southern California, the peppers really like it warm, so they did really, really well in Gary's dishwasher because the sides were warm and it kept them going really warm, and so we grew a lot of peppers growing in dishwashers all along the hillside. When it was out in the open growing, if it got too much of a chill, they stayed really small, and it could have been our weather, in my opinion, was cooler than usual. So we'll see, but the ones in the greenhouse, and there's not a greenhouse in the bedroom there, they're massive, it's unbelievable. So we'll see what happens. 
That's the garden tour. Nothing has changed in, from two weeks ago except, well, I can walk through and I've done a lot of cleaning. So I think I've kind of covered it for today. Like I said, you haven't lost me. I'm still around. I'm still doing crafts. I'm making a lot of different, um, you know, craft projects, DIYs. I'm going to make a lot of different bird feeders that have been working fantastic. I'll show you how I made this one. It was so simple. This one is great because I can fill this up with seed at night and the squirrels, mice and rats cannot get into it. They can't get into the other ones, but the bowls always. I'll show you what they did in different places around the yard. I have places around the yard where you'll see a little bit of bird seed. It's up, we didn't know at first what it was. It's bird seed. Sunflower seeds are growing. The millet is growing. It was so funny. We figured out the squirrels come to the bowls at night and then they've been digging holes and they've been burying the food for the winter, but it's growing, which is okay. It still gives them greens. It's so funny. It's all in different places around the yard. So it's, it's just amazing on birds. Look at that. I don't know if you can see, but there's birds back there. And that's the other thing I'm trying to do is get a video together on all the birds or a lot of the birds, not all of them. There's so many that come to visit our garden. So with that, I'll get something else together. Didn't want to waste anybody's time on the garden tour because it is really no different than two weeks ago, except it's actually cleaner. And see, my problem is trying to get rid of all this compost. I bring out kitchen scraps and then it's been getting full of rainwater because I haven't dumped it anywhere. But it's okay, I pour it into Kitty's garden or I pour it around the garden. We've got tomatoes still growing all over. So all in all, I think we're gonna be really, really fine for the winter. And now it gives me a chance to clean up and decide what I wanna do. So have a great day. Don't forget to eat what you grow and we'll, we'll be doing plenty in 2020 and getting all kinds of fun things going. Bye-bye, happy new year too. But you'll see me before that. Bye everybody, have a great day and don't forget to eat what you grow. See my new hat I picked up from the thrift store? Isn't that cool? A wallaroo. Never heard of it, but boy is it comfortable. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.